James placed a number on his, it was, it was a numerical level of concern. What was the number? Zero. 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 CC, should LeBron be more concerned than zero? Well, I'm sure that he has zero concern. Uh, there's no athlete that in competition they have zero concern, even though to the media, I can understand what he's saying. There's no need to panic. But when you get crushed in game number one after having six days off and it looked like you didn't prepare, of course, anyone, just normal common sense, would be like you would be prepared. They looked like they team did the first round against the Pacers. That would generate concern. Now, their inability to make shots, um, I wouldn't be concerned about that. LeBron being more efficient in game number two and moving forward. No, those things I wouldn't be concerned about. But it looking like they hadn't prepared for it, looking like Brad Stevens had their playbook in their back pocket, looking like they couldn't make any adjustments. Yeah, it looked like the Cavs, this moment, and their new players, this moment was too big for them. So LeBron's not concerned, but I would be concerned. The, the new player, listen, I don't expect much out of Rodney Hood and Jordan Clarkson. The new players weren't my concern yesterday. It was LeBron having his single worst playoff game that he's had since game three against Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, a game the Cavs lost as well, the only game in the Eastern Conference playoffs they, lo they lost last year. The Cavs, guys that shouldn't be have the moment be too big for him guys who have played in nba finals such as kevin love such as jr smith kyle corver even not looking like themselves and the Cavs' inability to counter punch when they knew the celtics were going to come out with a wrinkle this has been the best defensive team in the nba all year long for mm -hmm. a reason and the celtics did something very interesting which is they switched everything which you knew they might do yes but then when the Cavs tried to hunt down a mismatch as soon as you tried to enter the ball to the player with the mismatch they switched again and the Cavs were not ready after the first quarter second quarter third quarter to combat that wrinkle that they hadn't seen from Bar brad stevens the reason i'm closer to lebron's stated level of concern than cc's is they simply are not going to go another game all year where they miss their first 14 three-pointers. They're not going to go another game all year where they are one for 12 on open threes. And they will not have any other game all year, anything close to that performance by LeBron James. He called game one against the Raptors the worst game he's played maybe all season. He still gave you 24, 11, and 13. It was just inefficient. LeBron was sloppy with the ball, wildly inefficient from the field, couldn't hit a shot, and seemed disengaged throughout different periods of the game. And so that won't happen again. That's why this doesn't change my pick for the series. I, I, the game didn't go the way you would have hoped it to go, but I don't think it changes the trajectory of the series. Why do you think that happened? Six days off for this team to, to shore up some nagging injuries, get ready, prepare themselves, watch as much film as they wanted to watch, or was it that Brad Stevens had this team so prepared for what they knew LeBron was going to try to do at least? Now, you can give Brad Stevens some credit, but the coach don't make shots for you. The coach don't help you put the ball in the bucket. They did have a great game plan. The way they got the ball in the paint and dominated the paint, yes. The rest, that's, a, that's logical. For all the playoff series that we've seen, the team that had the great deal of rest, the conventional is, man, we got rest, we're going to play better. Basketball doesn't tell you that, not in the NBA. The team that consistently plays every two or three nights, they're able to maintain the level of play because that off time, you can't, you can't recreate the intensity in practice. And the NBA like practices it. So that's what we've seen typically in the playoffs. The team that went maybe a, a long series, that they come into the next series with some bounce because of the consistency. Well, and the about LeBron though, there there is there has been a trend to these playoffs that LeBron has used Game One as a feeling out game, so to speak. Now that doesn't explain the five for sixteen shooting or the zero for five from three, but it might explain these only sixteen shots. It might explain the lack of aggressiveness. They they are one and two in Game Ones this year. We can show the numbers. The only Game One they've won was when the supporting cast was very good against Toronto. In Game Ones, he's averaging twenty one points, shooting thirty eight percent, and an amazingly bad six percent from three. In every other game in the series, he's averaging 36 points on 58%. I, 
that we played a clip uh, last week of David Griffin talking about LeBron James on Bill Simmons' podcast. Part of the clip we didn't play is he compared LeBron to a computer on learning mode, a guy who sees things, ingests or digests what, he, what he's seeing, and then makes adjustments on the fly. LeBron alluded to that in the post-game press conference. He said, okay, now I know how they're going to play me. That doesn't, again, explain away or justify 15 points on less than 33% shooting. But I think it does explain some of the approach he had in the game that mirrors the approach of game one against the Pacers, game two against the Raptors. It was actually incredible. He's able to go back. I think someone asked him in the press conference about the, the Celtics' first run, and he was like, this play we did this, and that he yeah. remembers every single thing. When they got it down thing. to 14. It was yeah. the start of the fourth quarter he was yes. asked about. Yep. So here's my question. We know that LeBron is going to come back and be more of LeBron, but let's talk about the role players because they didn't show up in the Pacers series. They did show up in the Raptors series, and now you start game one and we sort of didn't have them here. What's your level of concern with, with the, the weapons around LeBron James? That's where all my concern is. I know LeBron's going to show up, but the role players still concern me. This is not, and I'll be consistent in this, this is not a great Cavaliers team. So if the role players don't play well, they got no chance. Against the four teams that are left, Celtics, them, that to, to me, the Cavs are the worst team. Now, they have the best player. But of the four teams left, the Cavs are the worst team of the bunch. Do you think the Cavs, top to bottom, are a worse team than the Celtics? Yes. Okay, that's from a team standpoint, how to play as a team, how to function as a team, how to play defensively as a team. Yes, as a team, of the four teams left, the Cavs are the worst team. Team. I th so the, the reason that I disagree with that is the Celtics have been two different teams in this postseason. One team at home and one team on the road. And so obviously, because they have home court, you're going to have to take one of those home games from them. But Jenna, I think you mentioned it in the morning meeting. They're now 8-0 and oh in home playoff games, are Boston. And I'm sure that's what Brad Stevens is preaching to them. Take care of game two, right? You won't have to go win a game in Cleveland if you can take care of that. And I can speak, I mean, listen, I was there yesterday. That's a great crowd. That's a smart crowd. The crowd absolutely helps them. I just, I, I don't, I think sometimes the role players, even though they didn't in round one, feed off LeBron. And LeBron almost gave everyone license yesterday to, ah, our threes aren't hitting, we, not locking in on defense. I don't think that'll be the case so, in the game. So one thing about this Celtics team that I think is different, because they had so many injuries and such inconsistency as far as the lineup, they were not a good offensive team. And what we've seen in the playoffs and what we saw yesterday, this is a better offensive team. It's a better shooting team. The longer they play together, we always talk about the Cavs. Oh, they haven't been together. Oh, they'll get it together. Well, the Celtics haven't been together either. And they made a lineup chain as far as Marcus Morris, put him into a lineup, more explosive, better shooters. All the guys can dribble. All the guys can shoot three-pointers. That, to me, there's a reason why I have a level of concern more so than other people watching the Cavs. This Celtics team is a better team offensively. All right, so the Celtics takes a 1-0 lead over the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals. Out West, how can the Rockets make a statement?